Let's take a look at our grid once more. Our grid is made out of columns and is made out of rows. Each of these tiles in the grid has three main attributes that we will use to create our vector field. The first one is the coordinate in the x-axis and the y-axis in which the tile lives. These points can be all around the tile, but we are going to use the top left corner, which is what is mostly used for Pygame. These points that represent the position of a tile in the grid are represented here with the white dots. Each of these tiles will contain a position, therefore, in X and Y. Those values will enter a helper function that will represent a multivariate function that takes the position in X and the position in Y and returns a mathematical value. That value can be anything, defined within a range of values that can go from negative to positive. However, we're going to use a remap function that will transform whatever output we get into values that are restricted around the circumference of a circle, from 0 to 360 degrees. These directions will be represented with a red line. The length of the red line represents also the force by which any particle that enters the grid and overlaps with a given tile will be expelled outside of that tile by using this force. The longer the line, the stronger the force. The position of the red line will have one value that is always a constant. That is the center of the tile. The second point determines the angle in which this line is located, and it will be calculated by using the information that came out of this function. For that, we will assume that we have a circle of radius 1. If this circle was in the plane x and y, by knowing what the value of an angle is, in this case let's call it theta, we can know what the position in x and why the position in y should be for that particular point. We are going to use to calculate this a formula called the math.cosine of the angle, and that is going to give us the increment, or this magnitude right here, in the x-axis. We call it the x. And we do the same for the y-axis, but this time we will use the sine function. which will give us this magnitude right here. From there, because this position is the coordinate 0, 0, of this particular plane, we need to add a bias. That is, how far to the right and how far down we're going to need to move from the starting position 0, 0, so that we see the end of the line with the added value in the x and dy represented where it has to be. Keep in mind that the values that we can get out of the function are not discrete. Here we can see that by going in a clockwise direction we add angles. Eventually we will complete a circumference. Let's implement this using Python and Pygame. 